Well, hello, and welcome to this week's devotional thoughts. I trust that you all are having a good week so far and are staying safe. For our time together this evening, I wanted to talk a little bit about gardening. So I've entitled my comments, What's in Your Garden? I'm sure many of you have gardens at home and find tremendous pleasure and relaxation while spending time there. Whether it be vegetables or flowers or both, I found myself spending a lot of time there watching Mother Nature in action. And in so doing, I've discovered many analogies that I can apply to my Christian walk. Whether it be okra, corn, tomatoes, the fruit of the Spirit, or the gifts that we all have, the garden setting provides a lens we can all see through to see how Mother Nature shows us how God uses the plant world to point the way to our ability to be fruitful. I want to share a verse, a passage of scripture from you from John chapter 15, verses 5 through 8. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. If you're like me, um, my garden usually starts with a plan. I usually try to have in mind what kind of fruits and what kind of vegetables that I want to grow, that I like to eat or preserve for later. Uh, there's not many dishes that I enjoy as much as I do homemade vegetable soup in the dead of winter. So our, in, in, in sorting this, uh, our plot or our soil is also very important. Uh, choosing a fertile piece of ground that is easy to work with a mixture of topsoil, uh, maybe some sand, plenty of organic matter certainly is a key to success. Early preparation is also a consideration for success. Uh, as each spring rolls around, the soil, the soil I'm sorry, is normally tilled, it's uh, plowed up or um, uh, usually plowed it, it, in an effort to grow, um, allow for good root growth. Once the ground is prepared for planting, the rows are laid off, evenly spaced with straight furrows. And even though Aunt Johnny always told me that uh, crooked rows grow more corn, uh, the straight rows are always preferred. Fertilizers are then added and then the seeds are planted. And then seven to 10 days later, we begin to see evidence of our labor. The germination process starts and the growth process begins. We watch in anticipation for the small cracks in the ground, knowing that the plants will soon make an appearance. As the seedlings emerge, they are seeking sunlight and will basically follow the angle of the sun during the daylight hours. You will notice that time, uh, the element of time, plays a very important role in all the steps along the way. As these young plants begin to mature, we see blooms starting to form. And we know that the blooms are the beginnings of our fruits and our vegetables. Blooming is also a very vulnerable time for the plant. It's usually the first opportunity that insects have to come in and lay their eggs on the blooms that later will produce a worm that rob our fruit of its potential. Then as the blooms begin to fall off, the young immature fruits and vegetables are recognizable in their infant form. You enter time, nutrients, sunshine, moisture, and the other components of mother nature, and then sit back and watch the young fruit develop. It's during this time that the immature fruits are at the greatest risk. Without all the basic needs being met, the harvest can be greatly reduced. Not only are insects a problem, but maybe more so the growth of weeds in the garden is also a big issue. We typically fight crabgrass, morning glories, Johnson glass, Johnson grass, or muta grass, uh, a, lot of, a lot of weeds that I can't even pronounce that, that you are familiar with in your garden. We don't plant these weed seeds, so where do they come from? Why are they there? Uh, are they just opportunists? 
They will typically rob the food, the water, and the sunshine from all of our good fruits, thus creating a burden on the garden to be productive. Very much work and effort had to be applied to rescue and preserve the fruits of your labor all along the way. Not only do we enjoy eating the, fr the fresh fruits and the vegetables, but we also grow vegetables so that we can freeze them or can them for cold days ahead. And then even more so, save our seeds in order to continue the circle of life for future gardens. In our human experience, I see all of our lives as very fertile ground. God has a plan for each of us and he prepares the way for us. Really, the potential that we all have is unlimited, certainly unlimited in multiple fruit production. And I think God begins his plan for us by preparing our hearts. In some ways that I see that he does that is instruction at home, uh, through Sunday school classes, through vacation Bible school, uh, regular Bible study, just mentoring, and a lot of times just watching and listening to those that you um, respect and admire. So when it comes time to lay off your rows, we start to see and feel that need to start our journey. And usually through the Holy Spirit, um, which provides those gentle nudges of encouragement and prompting. And as the rows are laid off, we receive the fertilizer we need through God's influence in Christ Jesus as our provider, encourager, and example. Seeds are being planted many times and in many ways through a variety of experiences and interactions. Seeds such as love, respect, concern for others, hope, kindness, selflessness, forgiveness, servanthood, just to name a few. As our ground begins to crack during this germination phase, we feel the urge of the Spirit to accept Christ as our Savior. Then we become aware of our need to be part of God's family by accepting Him as our Savior and becoming a young seedling or a young Christian. Just as important as the sunshine is to young plants, the same sun, our Jesus, is vital to young Christians. As a journey starts, the desire to be an active member is initiated. This is when the blooming phase begins. We want to surround ourselves with loving people who are displaying the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. Those nine fruits or those nine characteristics are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All the while, the seeds of failure and destruction are also blooming, such as anger, hate, gossip, hypocrisy, divisiveness, self-centeredness, many more as you could name yourself. Time, as was mentioned earlier, is a very much a factor here as well. Time well spent with godly people and influences will weed out those undesirable traits. The knowledge and awareness of the subtleties of sin's influence is important in our success. Every step along the way requires consistency and commitment to become good fruit. What role do you and I play? We are part of a congregation of loving people who are pulling together to support individual and corporate worship. What are the benefits of producing good fruits? Do we want to can them or preserve them? What, what are the benefits? Our fruits that can be harvested are vital to our spiritual health, both now, in the dead of winter, and to future generations. They are vital to the ongoing of God's kingdom here on earth. We are called to be God's hand and feet here on earth during our stay. You've probably heard it said that someone is always watching you. Your fruits and gifts are being admired and emulated many times without you even knowing. So how important is our witness? How important are our fruits? I think they're vital not only to our family, but to our church family, our circle of influence, our community at large. Fruits are very unique to the plants that they come from. Okra plants yield okra, corn stalks yield corn. But if we can uh, but for us, we can possess and share multiple fruits. God has un uniquely gifted each of us in so many ways. 
we have the perfect example in Jesus to see how it is supposed to be done. When we submit to live like Jesus lived, we too can become fruit bearers. While Jesus sets the perfect example of Christian living, we know we will fall short in some of our attempts, but God through his grace allows us many second chances to get it right. So the fertile grounds of all humanity will have seeds planted and grow spiritual fruit for all of us to experience. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the opportunities to come and read your word and share your word. And, and uh, we just thank you for um, this church, this church family. We just pray as during this time of transition that we will um, grow in your love, grow in your spirit, so that we can be and do those things that you would have us to do in this community, in this world. These things we're asking Christ's name. Amen.